Hello uh, everyone uh, at uh, NDP Basic Income Action Team. I really want to hammer down something with you guys. Um, I don't know how much you guys know about Alberta and the, UC and the UCP and what they've done over the past two years. And I probably can't name them all off because it, there's been a lot. Uh, when they first came to Alberta, they uh, declined all funding to the uh, blind centers for which had to close down and uh, only two remain. And one is in Calgary, the other's in Edmonton. And even they had to scale back. Then on top of that, half a year later, they went after PDD, which is the Persons with Developmental Disabilities Program, which uh, pays for the funding necessary to have, say, a person with a disability go into programs which might help them with life skills or basic stuff. Um, then on top of that, they um, also uh, went after AISH, um, where people with uh, disabilities, um, they uh, basically... Uh, de-indexed AISH from what the NDP did when they were in power and uh, when people when the NDP were in power they were making close to 17 if not just over 1700 every month and for every since the UCP have been in power and went after the AISH program people have been losing $30 for every single month that they've been on it then on top of that they also went after the uh, medical side of AISH, which is the assured living uh, allowance that most provinces put out. So whatever it is in your province, we call it AISH here. Um, they uh, changed it so that if you have uh, medical AISH, the biggest thing that I find uh, very disheartening is that if you're in a wheelchair, your maintenance fees or your maintenance is not being supplied. Then on top of that, they also made it so that um, CPAP and certain medications are not being supplied. Uh, my husband, if um, we were on my age, his CPAP machine is about $6,000. That is a brand new machine. That's without the hose. That's without all the other rigmarole that goes along with it. That is used towards people that may have breathing issues at night, such as sleep apnea might do. Um, then on top of that, they also went after the seat. Uh, they also um, made it so that uh, they turned uh, PDD into a two-tier program for which there is longer waiting periods and you have to be below 70 IQ in order to get it instead of looking at your diagnose. It's um, even worse. <laughs> then on top of that, um, uh, they uh, went after um, the medical side of age and made it into a three-tier system for which there's longer wait periods. If you apply, if you don't pass the medical, you don't get nothing. Then on top of that, um, they went after um, AISH and uh, basically or they went after seniors by um, and low income housing. Um, a lot of the low income housing around here has been denied funding. Um, he also took money out of that funding, most likely. I can't say whether he did or didn't, but I know a lot of people and a lot of housing programs have been denied funding. Um, and then on top of that, um, if you're a senior, uh, where your partner used to be on your medical, but you were younger than your uh, partner, uh, that person now has to go looking for other avenues, even if you are a year younger than your partner. That means that you have to go on to Blue Cross or other uh, genre for which may not supply all the medications that you might need. Then on top of that, they also um, made it so that if you are a senior and uh, you have certain medications, hell, this is for just about anyone. Um, if you have certain medications, they change the medical uh, program if you're on age or if you're a senior and made it so that if um, you uh, had a certain um, health condition for which made it so that you had to take a certain kind of drug and certain kinds of drugs work for certain kind of people and sometimes even the synthetics or the uh, no-name drugs um, might work for some but it might kill others or it might not work at all. So these people, just because the drug is cheaper, have to go to these drugs before they, you know, uh, 
and risk their health and their well-being. Then on top of that, um, in the last year, Alberta has been threatening uh, separation and as well as uh, making its own uh, um, retirement program. Here's the problem that I see. I'm on CPPD. I don't qualify for H. Um, and H ends at 65 here. So that means that people with uh, disabilities that are like mine, I have autism and ADHD, are um, put in a position where if Alberta, Alberta makes its own um, senior um, retirement thing, uh, pension plan, what's that going to do to me? Um, CPPD ties into CPP. He's already taken the teacher's uh, pension along with anyone that's on, uh, has CPP uh, retirement through means of their work uh, and put that towards risky business that AMCO is uh, putting on towards um, pipelines and all that stuff for which they've lost billions already this year. Um, and a lot of people are pissed about it. I am t totally pissed about it because I'm on CPPD. If Alberta pulls out and becomes separated, the problem, what's going to happen to me and my CPPD? Is it going to be taken from me? Um, how is Alberta, if they should uh, develop their own pension plan, going to address people on CPPD? How is that going to look? That's going to put a lot of people at risk because... It, I'm, I might get my husband's pension, but at the same time, my CPPD is all I've got. You need that, and the only way you can get it is if you've worked. Then on top of that, uh, there's another bigger problem that I see that uh, has recently uh, transpired. Uh, they've uh, put in a lot of bills that go against human rights, such as Bill 1. It... Um, makes it so that anything can be uh, considered as infrastructure and no one is allowed to protest. Um, if uh, you are caught blocking it, you could be arrested and charged, uh, possible jail time as well, and it's a very hefty fine. Um, and then on top of that, um, all the uh, Bill uh, 203, I think it is, or whatever it is, uh, there's been so many goddamn bills here, it's not even funny. Um, where uh, it uh, the power goes back into the employer, and uh, that means that um, the employer can fire you for whatever reason, and it doesn't, and they don't even have to give you a reason. It they'll just fire you. Um, and it workers' safety uh, is uh, questioned a lot. Um, then on top of that, here's another uh, pretty little. Uh, thing. Bills uh, 20, 21, and 22, 23, 24. Um, they all um, go towards people with disabilities and um, it uh, basically um, puts people at risk if you have a disability at any given time. Uh, it makes it really hard for someone like me or like average people, Joe Schmuck with a disability down, down the road with even harder ability to speak their mind, to be their own advocate. Um, and then on top of that, they're also um, suggesting um, different uh, ways of um, doing elections by bringing in more dark money. Uh, like there's been omni omnibus bills uh, after omnibus bills and it's all been during COVID and it's just left, right and center. And it's just crazy ugly here. I mean, uh, I don't, I don't know what to say. And I am a self advocate for the Alberta Hummingbird Project. I'm the leader and creator of that group on Facebook. And try as I may, I just... Kenny and the UCP have got the disability community spinning right out of crazy land because of all this. 
And I believe that, yes, basic income is, is a good thing. But here in Alberta, basic income, what's that going to look like if you have a disability, if you have things taken from you? I mean, they're also talking about privatizing all the senior homes, privatizing our health care systems, privatizing the school systems. They've already um, made it so that um, kids that need um, special um, services like an EA to help them learn. They've basically said, screw you, we're not going to fund this anymore. So people with disabilities, kids, their kids, they're going to be without. So they'll fall behind and fail all the classes. And that's not fair to the poor kids. The classes are going to be bigger here. There's been a lot of teachers that have been laid off, same with EAs. Um, then on top of that, there are also um, the homes that take care of the very medically challenged and more very severe type people with disabilities and children with disabilities they're going to they're talking about privatizing those too and they've got 90 days to um, get out of several of them between Edmonton and uh, Calgary for which is going to put a lot of families at risk i mean i this is crazy here and i wonder if there's any way that other provinces are willing to step up with other people with disabilities and help us speak out against our government. The disability community here needs help and we don't know who else to turn to. Please uh, contact me. Thanks. Name's Tara.